How is we going, retro people? My name is Brad, this is Retro Style Spotlight, and this is your news, notes, history, and retro games to play for the week of October 25th, 2016. We recently launched our Patreon page, and if you are among the first people that pledge to our Patreon and are watching this early, then thank you very much. If you are just hearing about our Patreon, then it is a way for you to pledge to us monthly to get early and exclusive perks starting at just $2 a month. Every dollar is a significant help to us, and if we reach our goals, more and more awesome things can happen. If you want to pledge to us, then the link is in the description below. Last week's tutorial was all about Final Burn Alpha and the various systems it emulates. In most cases, it emulates the same systems that that meme does, just as well, but FBA can run on lower-end hardware, and there are a few cases where FBA is preferred for that troublesome game or two. Whatever your reason for wanting to use Final Burn Alpha, if you need help in getting it to run, that tutorial is linked in the description below as well. Games being unreleased or unfinished coming to light has been a running theme in RSS the past few months, but this one has a bit of a heartwarming story attached to it. Dork and Yimp, and I have no clue if I'm pronouncing that correctly, is an SNES platformer developed in Sweden by a three-person team called Norse. I can personally relate to this team not being officially given the go-ahead by a publisher or even Nintendo, developing the game on Amiga computers without the aid of Nintendo or SNES dev kits. When it was finally nearing completion, they still couldn't find a publisher to help them out, and the project was quietly sent off in the night. Norse later disbanded without officially putting out a single game. Locally, however, the game gained some notoriety, and three years ago, Eli Galindo, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly either, of Pico Interactive saw the game in a Swedish gaming mag. Last week, I did a story on Pico Interactive, so you can see where this is going. Galindo found the creators of the game online and struck a deal to release the game, finally. The game was nearly finished, however the files that were recovered to bring this game back were apparently a lot earlier in development than they had hoped. The game was put on the back burner until something could materialize for it. What finally gave this game the kick it needed was sadly Norse member Jim Stutt passing away in 2014 and Galindo told Motherboard, quote, I felt like I needed to finish his game in his honor. 300 hours of work later, the game is finally released on Steam. There is no word of replica carts as of yet that I could find, but this game is available and I feel compelled to give this good looking gem a play or two. A few weeks ago, I showed off Green Hill Paradise Act 2, a 3D Sonic fan game that looked to be shaking things up. Well, the same engine is now in use for another awesome looking title called Sonic Utopia. Designed by Jordan Lang and his co-developers Murasaki Fox, Teapot, and Pixie, it utilizes the imagery from the first three games, the open-world style gameplay of Green Hill Paradise, some awesome music, and what looks like a lot of speed from Sonic. This title seems to do things a bit differently than Green Hill Paradise, but they both look to be awesome love letters. There is no demo available for download at the time of recording this, but the official game page says it should be coming soon. Link's Awakening is an awesome 2D Zelda game that fits in your pocket and provides hours of entertainment. Well, now you can play it in 3D. Carefully redesigned in the Ocarina of Time engine, Ty Anderson's The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening 64 is real. While technically a ROM hack of Ocarina of Time, this is actually a completely new game from the ground up. The only thing remaining from Ocarina of Time is the engine and potentially some assets, but everything from the 2D game has been converted and transferred to the 3D engine, and it looks fantastic. There does seem to be some original content on offer as well, but what is here is extremely promising. While not available for download yet, the author is showing their progress quite often, and this is one exciting fan project. I personally love Legend of Zelda in every single one of its games, no matter what, and I am extremely happy and looking forward to this game. Now it's time for Retro Remix Song of the Week. This week is a funky rendition for Sonic the Hedgehog 3 called Sonic Electronic. Remixed by Reza, this is an 80s inspired track utilizing the classic and fan favorite Sonic music. Give the song a download in the link below if you like what you hear.
This month, in 1994, Sonic & Knuckles was released worldwide on the Sega Genesis. Sonic & Knuckles is a platforming game developed by Sonic Team and published by Sega for the Sega Genesis. Released on October 18, 1994, it is the fourth installment in the main Sonic the Hedgehog series and a direct sequel to Sonic the Hedgehog 3. The game follows Sonic and Knuckles in their respective quests to save Angel Island. Sonic's side of the story picks up immediately after the events of Sonic 3, where Dr. Robotnik's orbital weapon, the Death Egg, is damaged in a battle with Sonic and crash lands back onto Angel Island, landing in a volcanic crater. Sonic travels through each zone looking to retrieve the Chaos Emeralds to defeat Robotnik and once again comes into conflict with Knuckles, who believes Sonic is trying to steal the Emeralds for himself. Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles were originally intended to be a single game. However, due to time constraints and the cost of large memory capacity cartridges, Sega split the game into two. The Sonic and Knuckles cartridges use lock-on technology that allows the game to connect to Sonic the Hedgehog 2 or Sonic the Hedgehog 3 cartridges, combining elements from either game, like Knuckles being playable in Sonic 2. Hooking Sonic 3 into Sonic and & Knuckles, playing from start to finish, actually unlocks the complete version of the game. Critics were impressed with the lock-on technology and hailed the Sonic & Knuckles as an exceptional game, despite its similarity to its predecessors. It has since been re-released in various compilations and on digital platforms such as Xbox Live Arcade, Virtual Console, and Steam. So that was Retro Style Spotlight for the week of October 25th, 2016. All of the relevant links to everything you heard in this edition of RSS will be in the description below. Remember, you can sign up for a Launchbox Forum account, and if Launchbox has given you a beautiful library of games, then why not purchase a premium license of Launchbox for $20 to access Big Box, which is a controller and couch-oriented version of Launchbox. The Launchbox Games database is available for any user to contribute to as well. Jason, Kirsten, and I have a lot planned for our community, so if you haven't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, we're doing a tutorial video every Friday, live developer sessions, Launchbox news, Q&As, and a ton more content in the future. One of our biggest steps recently has been our Patreon page, which is where you can go to pledge at least $2 a month to help us grow and make more and better content for you. Let us know what you think of RSS and any feedback you may have on it. My name is Brad, the link to my channel is below, and remember Freaks and Geeks to play more games, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day!